Yeah, we're going to begin unboxing now. While I'm doing this, I just want to remind you to review our videos uh, that go along with this series that goes over the pre-qualification of your vehicle and engine before the IMS retrofit kit is installed and also all the videos on the toolkits and how those tools should be used and how the uh, applications are. So as we open up the IMS solution kit here, the first thing we see, of course, are the best instructions in the industry when it comes to IMS retrofits. Most others have robbed our instructions and tried to plagiarize them for their own kits because they're that good. And this instruction manual will take you through all the parts of this procedure uh, the way that we've intended and developed it to be. Now attached here is the registration card. And the registration card tells us that this is a single row IMS solution kit and that matches the part number on the box. And this is a sticker that will be placed on your vehicle. The sticker here matches the number on the registration for the vehicle, as you can see here. And this card needs to be uh, returned to the address at the bottom here, along with your old IMS bearing. This is a requirement. You must send in this registration card filled out entirely with the work order and your original bearing for registration to occur. Without registration, there is no warranty. So take this very seriously and you have been forewarned, okay? So now we're gonna get the instruction manual and we're gonna, at this point in time, just show you that these other are the instructions for the IMS solution. These are also online at imssolution.com. And we also have the installation video that we've done that takes that uh, and puts it into a hands-on installation of an IMS solution. Okay, now, what we're gonna do, this is the IMS solution dual row bushing and flange. We can accomplish the unboxing of the single row kit and the dual row kit by simply telling you that the only deviation between these two kits is found physically in the differences of this flange and this bushing. All the other contents are the same. So we've compiled these into one video based on this. So if you've got a single row, your bushing is going to be a little bit more narrow. The flange is going to look a little bit differently. So you can do a dual row or a single row with this one unboxing video. So just to prove that, the first thing that I'm going to remove here is going to be the flange. And you'll notice everything is wrapped very neatly, very tightly in sealed bags. You want to make sure that all of your pieces uh, come out of your sealed bags looking just like ours do here. And that's important to make sure that you've never, uh, you're not receiving a kit that has been previously installed and then removed uh, by uh, less than, let's say, less than um, honest person, which happens sometimes. So this is our single row flange and bushing. And here's our dual row flange and bushing. So as you can see, we have a lot wider uh, bushing for this dual row than we have for the single row. Again, that's the only difference between the two kits. So we're gonna set that outside now. We won't be covering that anymore. So the bushing and the flange. And as I finish these, I'm gonna kind of put them right back where they came from. Okay, so here, this is the center stud, and the center stud retains the bushing onto the flange during the installation process. You'll see this. And this is basically how this stack up would appear when properly assembled, as you'll see in the installation video. This is a plug that is made to go in the back of the original intermediate shaft. So we, during development, we did not want there to be any 
uh, oil that made its way into the intermediate shaft. We wanted to keep all the oil in the sump where it belonged and we did not want to fill the tube with oil. Uh, so in this case, we made a precision fit plug that is installed in the back of the intermediate shaft. And again, you'll see that in the installation video. Um, and there's also a driver tool in the supplemental toolkit that drives this into place. Here is your oil sample bottle. And this oil sample bottle is used to collect a sample of oil to send in with your registration and with the old original intermediate shaft bearing that was extracted. These things are done to ensure that elective work, i.e. preventative work, was being carried out and that our product was not put into great harm uh, by being installed into an engine with a previously failing bearing. This is a must to collect your oil sample during the uh, oil draining process of your particular engine. Here we have uh, a bag full of small accessories. We have some thread sealant for our center stud. You can also put that on the micro encapsulated flange bolts if you would like. Here we have the bolts that will hold in the IMS solution. Two of them are a socket head and one is a uh, inverted Torx and micro encapsulation as you see on that particular one. These are what will retain the, the flange into the crankcase and I'll show you here. So obviously the two socket heads go in the deep recesses and this one goes there. Um, that keeps the snap ring that retains the IMS solution bushing as you see here from being damaged by the snap ring that retains it. So during installation, it will go in like so. This also helps to set the longitudinal end play or end float of the intermediate shaft during operation. Again, the video on installation goes over that in depth. And here we have a small fitting And this one goes on the spin-on oil filter adapter. Okay, it's a blue AN fitting, and that will thread into the oil adapter, which we'll go over next. So here we have the IMS solution spin-on oil filter adapter. And I want to go over a unique characteristic about this. The spin-on oil filter adapter is different than the standard oil filter adapter spin on that was developed uh, earlier and uh, sold by Ellen Engineering also. Uh, this particular one will give an output of oil to the IMS solution via a port that you see here. Now what is unique about this is it uses just filtered oil. So as the oil goes through the filter, it comes into the filter on the outside here. It goes out of the filter through the center of this tube. Inside this tube is an orifice that feeds oil to the oil line for the IMS solution. So this creates a just filtered oil scenario for the IMS solution, which is a key. Okay, so you want to pay attention to the hoses and the fittings that are in the kit. The output from the spin-on oil filter adapter. We'll set this aside for now. We're going to pull out our bag here that has our hose and fittings assembled into it. So here, it's important you understand how this is supposed to work. So the blue fitting that you see here is designed to be installed into the flange of the IMS solution. We've even seen professionals goof this up, even with very good instructions, okay? So this one goes here. The black fitting that has an O-ring on its base is designed to be threaded into the spin-on oil filter adapter as so. And that O-ring is designed to seal off and provide a nice, good oil seal to prevent leaks. Then, the way the hose should be routed at this point, or at least mocked up, if you will, to familiarize you with the assembly, is this blue fitting then is threaded onto the spin-on oil filter adapter. 
Now, sometimes this will create confusion because you've still got two 90 degree angles, as you can see. Here's 90 degrees and here's 90 degrees. But during installation, this fitting will crash into the crankcase and will not allow you to install a kit. So it's important that it goes together in the manner that I'm showing you here. Which is, of course, we go over that in the video too, the installation video. So this is the way the assembly should be plumbed when it is put into your particular vehicle or the engine, obviously. So while it may seem that you can invert these, you can do that as a mocked up assembly, but in practical application, it simply will not install correctly. So for instructional purposes, I'm just gonna remove this and leave the fittings back where they are. And the oil hose is as you see it here. Now these oil hoses are very high pressure. They have 100% quality control checks done to them. It is important that you lubricate the threads during installation uh, because if they ever try to drag or gall, it can create something where the fitting appears to be tight, but it really isn't. So uh, we tend to always lubricate these components as they're going together to make sure we don't have any issues that could cre you know, create a leak. Okay, moving right along here, we have a tube of assembly grease, and this assembly grease is going to be put on the inside diameter of the bushing here, and also it's going to go on the outside diameter of our flange here. So it's imperative that we use this heavy grade assembly grease given to us here by uh, Driven Oil to help protect the surfaces, uh, the dynamic surfaces from load, uh, that could create wear during initial startup. So this is a very good grease that it has worked very well for this over the years. So you want to use that particular grease for that and you want to do that in lieu of any oil that you may have a tendency to want to use. Oil will not stick with it long enough to get oil pressure for the first time within the engine. Now our final piece of the puzzle here is our Napa Gold oil filter. This is made to go directly on the spin-on oil filter adapter. We prefer this filter over all others. And the reason why is because of flow volume as well as the ability of this filter to filter the oil the way that we want it to be filtered. Uh, we have many decades of experience with these Napa Gold filters. And in this application, this has continually proven to be the best filter even better than a lot of those that are marketed as being higher performance or a better filter. So before you start changing your mind about a filter based on an advertisement, understand this is the only filter that we recommend to be used with the IMS solution.